Hi everyone, I am Vidya Mala. This is a video on ICAC 2023 exam preparation part 2. In this video, we shall discuss how to answer MCQs and syllabus some important board exam questions for theory chapters from climate till waste management. In part A, we have MCQs. It carries 10 marks and it will be asked from all the theory chapters from climate till waste management. Usually children find MCQs to be very tough. My suggestion is, when all the options seem to be similar, you choose the most closest one that comes to your mind. And you can choose the correct answer only if you are thorough with the concept. And you can also use elimination method if you are not sure of the answer. Now look at these sample questions. It is from Climate of India chapter. A climate of India is greatly influenced by dash latitude. Let's use elimination method. Tropic of Cancer. We know Tropic of Cancer passes through the center of India. Question B. Equator. Equator is to the south of India. So definitely equator is not the answer. Then Tropic of Capricorn. It is in the southern hemisphere below the equator. So that is also not the answer. And finally Arctic Circle. We know it is in the North Pole. We know it is near the North Pole. So the most apt answer here is Tropic of Cancer. The second question is a direct question. The climate of India can be described as tropical monsoon type. Third question, the places to the north of Tropic of Cancer experience dash climate. Here let's use the elimination method. Oceanic type, place north of Tropic of Cancer. So north of Tropic of Cancer, do we have any ocean? No. So it is definitely not oceanic. Option B, continental type. Continental type of climate is found in the interiors of continents. So yes, this may be the answer. But still let's hold on and look at option C. Desert type. Do we have fully desert in North India? No. We have Thar Desert only in the northwestern part. So that is also not the right option. And option D. Mediterranean type. In India, we do not have Mediterranean type of climate. So after eliminating option A, C and D, the leftover option is option B. So that is the right answer, continental type of climate. And fourth question, temperature rises up to 50 degrees Celsius in dash during summer. Know that usually in desert regions, the temperature will be very high. So just by looking at the options, we will know that Rajasthan is the right answer. Now the next doubt you'll have is how to write the answer. Should we write the question and the answer or just the question number and the option? See this question, which soil is self-plowing in nature? Here the answer is op option C, black soil. So the answer should be written as question number 1, option C, black soil. Next we move on to part 2. It carries 50 marks and you are expected to answer only 5 questions. So out of total 9 questions, you will answer five questions and my five chapters are always the single chapters climate soil natural vegetation water resources and transport because for all the other chapters you will have to learn two or more than two chapters however it is entirely up to you now climate of india on the left side you can see the syllabus provided by the council and to the right side you can see the scope here are some important terms that you need to learn starting from pre monsoon period burst of monsoon, break of monsoon, the meaning of the word monsoon, movement of monsoon winds, then October heat. When it comes to local winds, Lu, Kali Baisaki and Mango Shivers, they also have other names. You should also know why they are called so. Say for example, Kali Baisaki. Kal means destruction. Baisaki is actually a month. So since it brings calamity in the month of Baisaki, it is called Kal Baisaki. And also the names of local winds what type of wind they are, where they blow, do they bring rainfall or what are the effects of these winds. Then the most important question is Himalaya. Why do they act as a perfect climatic divide? Factors affecting the climate of India when they ask about the range of temperature. Usually the question will be uh, why Delhi has higher range of temperature than Kochi. So whenever you have a question related to range of temperature, definitely one place will be in the interior and one place will be a coastal area. So here in this case, Delhi is in the interior and Kochi is a coastal area. And remember, whenever it is a coastal area, they will have the moderating influence of the sea. That is why the range of temperature will be less. And rainfall related questions. Say for example, why Kolkata gets more rainfall than Agra. Remember, when it is North India, the southwest monsoon wind will decrease from south to north. 
whereas in south india the rainfall will decrease from east to west so first you should know the location of the place in this case kolkata is in the east lower ganga valley whereas agra is more towards its west in the middle ganga valley so in north india we know that the rainfall decreases from east to west that is why kolkata is getting more rainfall than agra and also don't forget to write the name of the wind that brings rainfall here in this case it is bay of bengal branch of southwest monsoon wind and when should we write about the windward slope and leeward slope when the question is like why mosandrum is getting more rainfall than shillong or why mumbai is getting more rainfall than pune and if there is a mountain between them so definitely one will be on the windward side that is the side that faces the wind it gets heavy rainfall and definitely the other side will be the leeward side or the rain shadow region which gets very little rainfall so you should be able to write which is on the windward side and which is on the leeward side and also don't forget to mention the name of the wind here mosandrum is located on the windward side of garokashi jaintia hills whereas shillong is located on the leeward side and since our bay of bengal branch of southwest monsoon wind is first hitting the windward side mosandrum gets more rainfall than shillong which is on the leeward side then questions related to altitude they may ask you even in summer why shimla is cooler than delhi in this case both shimla and delhi are in north india but delhi is a plain area where shimla is a hill station and we already know that for every 166 meter high the temperature decreases by 1 degree celsius so you have to write as a shimla is in a higher altitude whereas delhi is in the plains as altitude increases temperature will decrease then questions related to latitude like hills of south india are not snow covered even in december we know that south india is more closer to the equator so they have high temperature due to the direct rays of the sun then with regard to sources of rainfall they may ask you uh, what are the sources of rainfall for tamil nadu or punjab very very important board exam question why thar is a desert it is a repeated question points are there by heart these three points then there are two types of cyclone for our syllabus one is tropical cyclone and the other one is temperate cyclone temperate cyclone is also called western disturbance or westerly depressions you should know from where the wind is blowing during which month they are blowing and which all areas they are blowing and what are the effects of these winds coming to the most important part problems in climate chapter often the question will be total rainfall or average rainfall now read the question properly if it is total rainfall just add the rainfall column rainfall column but if it is average rainfall then it is total divided by the number of months and for all these problems remember no units no marks you will just get zero even though your answer is correct for rainfall the unit should be in centimeter and for temperature the unit should be in degree celsius range of temperature is nothing but maximum temperature minus minimum temperature then name of the wind whenever a name of a wind is asked to identify you look at the rainfall column if the maximum rainfall is between june to september then the wind is southwest monsoon wind or if the maximum rainfall is between october to november then is retreating monsoon wind or if the maximum rainfall is between december to february then it is northeast monsoon wind and the next question they may ask you on which coast is the station located remember india is having only two coast east coast west coast so again look at the rainfall column if the maximum rainfall is between june to september then write as west coast or if it is between december to february then write as east coast and they may also ask you is it a coastal area or is it in the interior like i told you always coastal areas have the moderating influence of the sea so the range of temperature will be very less so calculate the range of temperature and if it is less than 10 degree celsius then it is definitely a coastal area or you write it as a continental or interior then last question they may ask you the driest and the wettest month driest month means look at the month having the lowest rainfall and for wettest month look at the month having the highest rainfall so you should be able to get full marks in problems now coming to soil resources of india so to the left is the syllabus and to the right is the scope first learn all these important terms they are often repeated question in our board exam distinguish between in situ and ex situ soil in situ is also called sedentary and ex situ is also called residual or transported soil 
they learn the different types of soil erosion their causes with the areas and prepare a tabular column and learn all the characteristics of the four soils such as color texture minerals in which they are rich in and deficient in and the crops for which they are useful both food crops and cash crops separately then distinguish between kadar and bangar then why alluvial soil varies in texture and which is the most abundant soil found in india then mention some methods to conserve soil specifically in hilly areas and desert areas then they may ask you similarities for similarities you don't have to divide the page but simply write as both the soil are red in color due to the presence of high iron oxide and both the soil are porous and not moisture retent and whenever you write distinguish between the different types of soil do not write about area or distribution you should strictly write about the characteristics only the color texture or the mineral and here are some very important one words that will help you for your mcq next we move on to natural vegetation of india to the left you can see the syllabus and to the right you can see the scope so first thing learn all these important questions learn the characteristics of all the types of forests learn the names of important trees alone no need to learn the uses of each and every tree and third learn the climate rainfall state and area used using a tabular column and if you are thorough with the tabular column itself you will be able to answer most of the questions and whenever distinguish between the types of forest is asked you have to write about the characteristics of the forest do not write about the area or state where it is found and other repeated questions are why forest cover is shrinking or what are the importance of forest why should we conserve forest new forest policy even though it has never been asked let's learn some important questions in each and every type of forest evergreen forest you should know why they are called as evergreen or rain forest or why they are called as lungs of the world why the trees have broad leaves and why they are commercially not exploited one words like name the forest found in the western slopes of western ghats or terai region to which forest is the term epiphytes associated and deciduous forest also called monsoon forest you have to learn why they are economically useful why the trees shed their leaves in the dry season and which forest is found in the east slopes of western ghats and for one word you should know that they are present in the eastern slopes of western ghats and they occupy a larger area in india coming to thorn forest or tropical dry forest it is very very important to know the special adaptations or it will be asked as how do the trees correlate with their environment and the most important term here is xerophytes and give reason why deserts have less, less vegetation it's because they have scanty rainfall next delta tidal mangrove or littoral forests you should know why they are called by these names and very important their adaptations and the important word here is nematophores and for one word you should know why sundarbans got its name or trees of these forests can survive in both fresh water and saline water finally you should know the definition for these important terms like afforestation reforestation agroforestry farm forestry social forestry and joint forest management water resources of india to the left we have the syllabus and to the right we have the scope first please draw a tabular column and write down all the states and areas suitable for various types of irrigation and learn all the advantages and disadvantages of all the types of irrigation and often comparative questions are asked between these types of irrigation like what are the disadvantages of tanks over wells in this case if you simply write as it has high rate of evaporation then your answer will be wrong because we don't know whether the it is regarding tank or wells so you have to write about both the parameters like large amount of water in tanks can be wasted through evaporation whereas in wells the rate of evaporation is comparatively less and be clear with the primitive and modern methods of irrigation and their advantages and always sprinkler and drip irrigation are considered to be modern methods and their main advantage is economic use of water that is they have less wastage of water fifth question need for irrigation this is an often repeated question so be thorough with the answer and sixth question distinguish between inundation and perennial canal and conditions necessary for digging a canal or why canals are suitable more in north india than south india then they may ask you conditions necessary for constructing a tank or the same question may be asked as why tank irrigation is popular in peninsular india 
and learn the two types of well surface wells tube wells and how water is extracted from each of them for tube wells we need electric pumps whereas for the other wells we use persian we leave a method deckley mote and all that and need for conservation of water is also a repeated question and ideas to manage current water crisis like this general questions may also be asked coming to rainwater harvesting every year one question from rainwater harvesting is compulsory first learn the definition or the meaning of rainwater harvesting then learn the methods when coming to methods expect picture based questions and if they ask you objectives of rainwater harvesting or advantages or importance you can write these points uh, mcqs they may also ask you different names used for rainwater harvesting coming to mineral and energy resources here is the syllabus and scope please learn the tabular column by heart the largest producer of these minerals is an often repeated question and also learn two important states for each mineral and one mining area at least for each state and when it comes to mineral oil learn oil refinery separately and oil fields separately under energy resources again largest producers are very important so learn the tabular column by heart and these are some other important questions often repeated in our board make sure you are able to answer them correctly so we have come to the end of this video the remaining chapters we will discuss in the next part i hope you are thorough with the answers now see you soon in my next video until then bye bye